Hey everybody, welcome to Mark's EM Chat Repair. Um, welcome Sunday. A uh, big busy week for me. Um, I picked up a, a new game. A cyclone. Um, it doesn't work. It's got a U10 PIA failure. And it's like, okay, Mark, why are you working on your game when you got other games? Well, I picked it up. I knew it had this failure. And I wanted to do two quick tests on it before I pulled the board out and send it out. By the time I get the board pulled out, and, um, well, by, actually, by the time I get the board back, from being repaired, I will be caught up with all my jobs and have time to actually work on one of my own games between games, so which is kind of cool. And what else? So I worked more on Gold Strike. What I did behind the scenes was, you know how I work on a couple things with you guys like we did um the upper flipper as well i finished the lower flippers we did one slingshot i did the other slingshot i did that um as relay which i should have kind of did in front of you guys but those are so tricky and finicky where you, you got this little bitty disc that's about this big that spins around in a circle and getting that lined up i didn't really think it was a good idea to sit there on stream and try to rebuild this little mech. It's just, it's kind of a nightmare to do. Oh, and I got my new Dave's Arcade shirt yesterday, which is cool. Got the big patch on it. Oh, I should get you one other thing real quick, too. Turned my light off on accident. So it was really cool. Because I got this yesterday. My first like real ever trophy for anything. That's not including participation trophies when I was a kid. Yes, I got a participation trophy when I was a kid. I don't understand why and it kind of like bothered me. I kept saying I didn't do anything to get this. Why am I getting a trophy? I got an award for being in soccer. And I showed up for one game and I didn't like it. And I never went back. But they still gave me an um, award for it. So, um, I don't know why. But this, I actually played really super good yesterday. I think I won three or four of the seven matches that we played yesterday. This, if you don't know, is um, the girl from the backlash of Stargazer, Stern Stargazer. And the TF you see here is Twisted Flippers. That's the um, league that I belong to. So this is really super cool. I think it's really neat. It's awesome. My first trophy. I actually beat out two other really super good pinball players. Um, one was Dave from Dave's Arcade, and um, another one was Rob. Um, both of them are truly better than me, so I don't know how I, I beat them. Maybe it was the 30-pack of Miller Lite I brought. I don't know. But it was cool. So, yeah, it's my first trophy ever. Let's put that back. I'll, I'll maybe I'll, I'm going to put it back on the stairs. I want to put that back upstairs in my living room so I don't knock it over. And then uh, another thing I need to do is I have to resubscribe to Twitch.
because use Prime Sub. Subscribe free with Prime. There we go. I should probably have a pop up that comes up here. Show me. Ooh, I got a 15 month anniversary. Fifteen months in a row I've been here we go, there's my little thing right here. Cool. But anyways, um ding ding ding. Well, it does make a noise after it's almost gone. Alright, so we are gonna get to a play field. It might look a little different. That giant drop target bank right there, that has been completely rebuilt. That's another thing I did too. Um, all these, let's switch back. These are just all super smoky and nasty. I mean super nasty. So we're gonna actually rebuild this one on camera. What we need to do is we need to hook the springs up, put the drop targets in, and then put a little oil on all the little metal connections so it works smoothly and flawlessly. And that'd be about it. But let's get to the play field first. Once we get some more people in, we will do that. Let me see if I can um, do this one. No, I don't want that one. Okay, yeah, or this one. We can do that one. Let's do that one. I need to move my camera so I can see that. Hopefully I will not unplug the little camera. I will keep an eye on that to make sure I'm not pulling the cord. For that I probably can unplug easy. Actually, we probably, I don't need to move this anyways, but I'm gonna, just in case. All right, we are here. I can see what's going on. I can read what's going on. And I will move you to get a better look. And Let's get working on a pop bumper. Let's do that. Get my tools closer to me. Oh, there I go dropping something. And I dropped a bunch of other things. This is another reason too. I need to get some games out of here. I have too many things in my way. All right, pop bumper. Here we go. We're going to rebuild a pop bumper. I wish these wires weren't so short. Um, maybe we'll do this one instead. We will do this one because it's a little easier to see. As you can see, I got these... Um, wire tied down to the board it just makes it easier for when I move the board around to do repairs move things stuff like that these are working pretty decent they're doing what they need to do but not good enough we're gonna take these two screws out first Take that and put it over here out of my way. There, both of those are out of my way. This will pull out, set there. That will go like that. 
Everything is good here. It will need a little cleaning. And now this will come apart like this. And then we will clean that. And we'll just widen it out a little bit. Make it a little bit easier. And this we will just wipe off. Why I'm wiping this off, it's um when this game was in the fire, I don't know if it some stuff got wet or what. My screen's bigger on uh, the, my computer versus yours. Anyways, um, I don't know if there was like high humidity or things got wet and then it'd get dried off. But these got like a kind of like a like a light corroded feel to them, where they're just a little bit rough. <laughs> now I'm gonna start coughing now because the dust from this. But anyways. Want to get some of that off. You see smoke damage stuff there. Just get some of it cleaned off. Like I said, this isn't really enhancing anything. This spring might enhance a little bit. I'm just spinning it slightly and rubbing it back and forth. Get it clean. These are in pretty good condition. Yep. Don't need to replace them, which I'm glad. Because I don't have spares for these. Well, I probably do. I'd have to take apart one of my machines to get spares. But yeah, this is just a regular plain old Gottlieb pop bumper. This is actually in really good shape here. That's the other piece I do want to clean off with the naphtha. Get a new paper towel. Where are we? Isn't this like ripped at the end? No, wow. Okay. The end of this paper towel, none of them are perforated. Which I find weird. So let me clear this off my monitor. There. So we can get to this a little easier. Just snaps off. Close that up because when you knock it over, you will spill it and you will knock it over. We're just cleaning this off. Clean all the smoke and dust off of it from coil firing and metal wear and all that stuff. Like that. And we'll take the coil sleeve out. It's garbage. Clean the coil up as good as we can. Doesn't need to be perfect. I guess if we're not doing a restore, we're just doing a mechanical refurbish. We just want it to be clean and working. If I was doing a restore, I'd probably just be putting new coils on here. So it looked nice and clean and neat. All right, that's that, that's that. I do need, um, Coil sleeves. New coil sleeve. And we'll go down through here. Like that. We can probably put that back in there like that. So that will go there. We'll just leave it like that for now. This assembly, we will put this back together. Set that down. Let's get this. That go 
goes like that. So now here, there's a little wear right here. You can see how it's wear. So you take that and you flip it over. So now it's tight like that. You can do it this once. Because once this side gets wore, then you need to replace it. That will go in there like that. And then that will go in there like that. And then that's set. That will go back in there like that. That. Get a screw in there. If I can find it. Come on. I gotta lay it flat. There. Oh, come on. Why are you being like that to me? There we go. I had a little angle. That's what you get sometimes when you're working on these further away from you than you're used to. So tighten up. I want to get my regular screwdriver. I don't like having that thing three feet from my hand. I just feel like I'm going to slip off and jam the screwdriver into my hand and gush blood all over the place. And I did put it on an angle. That's why I couldn't get the screws in. Still went in on a slight angle, which is weird. And what is stopping us now? Okay, I see what I did. The coil moved on me. time mark so I had a coil off center but like I said I'm got my hands out a foot ahead of me there we go I can't really see what I'm doing that good and I also did went through all the switches here and cleaned off all the switches as and um, fixed all the lights either they were spinners or not spinners but they did go through and get fully cleaned also so let's get to this pop bumper which is right here so have any of you guys watched my new um, William Sorcerer playfield swap yet which is going on my YouTube channel I will put a link up for that in a second. Um, right there. There's my YouTube link. I am doing a William Sorcerer playfield swap right now. Well, actually, I'm not doing it right now. I did that last year almost. This is just nasty. This is the same thing. Come on. This one's just like stuck to it. Screwdriver. There we go. It's like stuck. And get a little naphtha on it. But yeah, um, ah, that machine turned out beautiful. 
I would have loved to kept that sorcerer for myself. I'll get one someday. I'm just starting to collect um, more games that I like now. I'm taking games that I had bought that I really didn't want that much or I did think I wanted and didn't, you know, like fall in love with them as much as I wanted to. But I did love them while I did own them, you know what I mean? And now I'm slowly getting rid of those and keeping ones that I really like the most. But I can't do that with all the machines, so I have to kind of like pick and choose. So, actually I don't have room for any more games right now. I think I'm up to 18 or 19 games right now. Maybe 17 or 18 at least. So, that's just nasty. Just so much smoke was, damage was on this game that it's just crazy how much I've been taking off. <coughs> Excuse me. Sleeve comes out, it's garbage. So, yeah, um, one of the games I fell in love with was Hurricane. I really love that game, but you know, just after owning it for so many years, it, it didn't have that, um, you know, feel to it anymore, you know what I mean? Um, just like. A lot of people they buy games and have them for years, and then after a while, you just you just move on. Um, my friend Dave from Dave's Arcade, he just is doing the same thing. He's selling three games right now. Games he loved, games he doesn't want to sell, but games are kind of like low on the list right now of games he'd rather replace. You know what I mean? So he just stole this, sold his Stargate. It was I know that was really hard for him to sell. And then he sold, um, well, he's selling his EM um, gun game. It's monster something. I was going to buy it. But came to a conclusion, the only person that's going to be playing it is me. So I don't want a game that where I'm just going to play well, yeah, I do. Um, but, um, I, no, I didn't feel I was going to play it enough. And that game should really go to somebody that um, is really into that um, monster theme. It's a great game, though. I just played it yesterday. Again. This is nasty right here. This I can feel... It's got like chunks of junk on it or whatever. So yeah, but then like what my Beatles is a game I'm keeping. This I have to get a file. This has a little bit of um burring on the top of it. I gotta go get a file real quick. That's right, I got some little ones here. Never mind, I'll use one of these. So yeah, Beatles is a game I love. So that one is something I'll never get rid of. Well, I shouldn't say that. There's always a day and time where you do that. Special that I really love. I love that one so much. I bought a play field, new play field for it. So I can't like really sell it because I'll never ever get my money out of it. Right now I'm just, um, I don't know how this got scratched up so bad. It's like banged on the top where it's kind of like mushrooming a little bit. I just want to get the sharpness off of it. It's 
so when we um, put it back together, it will not destroy the sleeve. That's good. Let's look at the coil stop. There's really nothing wrong with the coil stop. I'll just go over it a little bit. Coil stop's in good condition. I don't know why that was like that. Maybe at one time it was damaged. And what they did was they just re replaced this piece. Replaced this piece and just put it back together. I've seen that. Actually, this is in a lot nicer shape than this one. So maybe. Don't know. What I do like about Gottlieb is if your coil stops are bad, you can just buy a new one and put a new one in. You're not like stuck like with the other brands where you're buying a whole new bracket like this to repair it. That's what I, one thing I like about the Gottlieb. Now you're probably thinking too, Mark, you got this whole play field clean and now you're doing this over the top of it, getting it all dirty. Yeah, which is true, but once I flip it over, all that, that dirt, dust and dirt is just going to fall right off anyways. So the coil sleeve goes in there like that. That's going to be a tight fit. Sometimes that happens. This will go like that. This time we're going to make sure we get it in there like that and not like that. Here we go. Here we go. Again. See, it's a little chewed up, so we flip it over like that. And put it in there. And we did it wrong. Like that. That's how it goes, dummy. And then this. And then this. And there is the assembled piece. This we will stick into the coil pop bumper assembly get these lined up make sure the coil is set in there properly this time get the screws in so yeah hey Jeremy what's up he f Dave fixed your pin bot from chat today while you were streaming it that's awesome what what was what did he do to help you fix it. I'm going to move that so I can read that a little bit better. I know Dave used to own a pin bot at one time. He had a player condition one. So it was nothing like yours. I know yours is mint. Alright. And we go like that. And we go like that. Perfect. Alright, now we're going to clean the switches on these two. It'll take my buzzer. And we'll pick up some tools that are on the floor. Put the buzzer in. Again, my buzzer is just a cheap Harbor Freight. Um, oh, fuse and diodes. These suggested the connectors. Yeah. That's one thing everybody always seems to say, reseat connectors and see what happens. This is a Harbor Freight Dremel with an actual Dremel 443 drill bit. I'm just going to go on the contacts and buzz them clean. Oh, and we got a bad one right away. Two bad ones. I'm going to see if I can show you what I mean by a bad contact. Um, I don't know if, how good I can get it. Let me get a light on it. 
I call them spinners. This is a spinner. These, this will wreak havoc on your game. Okay, this contact right here that's right in front of my finger. I'm as tight as I can get it, but I'm going to put my Dremel in there, and you should see the top of that spin. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do this. Okay. I don't know if you, I, I'm, put, I'm putting a, a like a line scratch across the top of it. All right. You can kind of see that. So now watch. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get in there with my my buzzer. This is why I like using this tool. And you should see that spin around. You see that spin around? That is going to wreak havoc on your game. You are going to get, um, you're going to hit the, like the pop bumper, and what's going to happen is you're going to hit it and it's not going to fire, or you're going to hit it and it will fire. It's either going to do fight, it's going to fire or not fire. The reason why? Because that connector is loose in there. Now there's two ways to fix it. You can. Um, Go put a, a drop of solder on the back, which I think I'm going to do instead. I need to see if the, this other one is a spinner, too. I don't think it is. I think I'm just going to do a solder on the back since this contact is easy enough to get to. Okay, that's not a spinner. And... Yeah, just the bottom contacts. Yeah. So anyways. So normally, like I, I brought my vice grips out, you can just go like this and grab that contact and squeeze it. You know, get a good squeeze on it and I'll, that will stop the spinning. Or you can do like what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to solder the back of it. I think the soldering method on this one's going to be a lot better than um, trying to crimp it. I could crimp it, but this is more of a, a higher voltage um, contact that's going to be slamming around a lot. And the crimping will hold it, but since this is a pop bumper assembly, and not, not just a regular switch. This is going to get, you know, it's going through a lot of torture, right, um, as the game plays. I am going to just solder that the back of that. The contact is right under here, and this is just going to contact like that. So by me, by putting a little solder on the back of it, it's going to basically um, metal glue it down. I kind of like to call soldering metal gluing. You know what I mean? But that is, um, that gives you phantom switch issues. Like you're hitting stuff and you're like, okay, I'm not, it's not doing anything. So let's, um, you know, check other things. Since those are two different metals, the leaf is really super thick and the contact is really super thin. I wanted to make sure it was heated up real good to make sure that solder stuck to both of them because it was just sticking to the leaf for a while. So I wanted to make sure that contact got heated up enough. That one actually went really good. 
So that is a big issue with Gottlieb's. I found out more on Gottlieb's than any other game I've worked on is with the spinner. So now we got that soldered, as you can see. So if I plug in my, what do you call it again? My Dremel. I know it's clean now. There we go. So yeah, um, if this was just like a regular leaf switch, like, um, where are we right here? Like one of these, these ones I just crimped with um, device grips. Almost all these were loose. These are um, switches for the drop targets. So the only thing they're doing is they're just going like this. They're not being subject to abuse from a pop bumper. So these ones I just went with the um, vice grips, where is it? Just went like this, got in there and just went with the contact. Just gave it a squeeze like that. You don't have to do a big squeeze, just a, you know, a, a decent, you know, little squeeze. And then that will smash the back of the contact and mushroom it back out because these were like rivets if you know what a, a rivet is it's just a long post that will go through one of these holes and then that gets smashed down and it mushrooms out and expands and which locks in there but Gottlieb's over the year I don't know if their rivet was long enough or whatever but they get loose so now that we soldered that back up there's never going to be a problem with this pop bumper. Where are we? We'll never have a problem with that pop bumper now. Because we're too high still. So this is now permanently fixed. That contact right there is never going to get loose. Yeah, it looks ugly, but from all the abuse that's going to be in this area from the pop bumper firing, we are never going to get in that problem where we're going to have issues where this contact is going to lose. So that is definitely a permanent fix. You can take the leaf out and grind off the contact and put a brand new contact in it, but this contact I can feel is in perfect shape. So we just soldered the back of it and it's good. But yeah, that's a, a easy fix for these Gottliebs. So yeah. Okay. Jeremy, thanks for popping in. And yeah, that's great that Dave um, figured out your problem for you on your game, which is super awesome. Alright. We are going to um, work on these. We are going to pull these out. I don't know which was going to be the best way to do it. I just left my camera there and zoomed in. And work on these. Sorry for all the moving around with the camera, but i got to do what i got to do. These, let's zip tie back down. Where did I put those zip ties now? All right, here we go. because I'm going to have to flip over to Playfield later and do work on the top before we can finish underneath the Playfield. So I need to wax and clean the Playfield before I can put the pop bumpers back on. So since we got these both rebuilt, let's widen it back out so you can see what I'm doing. Since we got these both rebuilt, they just need to be secured to the Playfield. So when I flip it over, we don't have dangling pop bumpers around. There. Now those are connected. So when I do flip the playfield over later, after we finish this stuff, 
we won't have any issues with stuff flying all around. All right, let's get this party started. We're gonna start working on these relays. Pull that clip out, get it out of the way. I'm gonna pull this out. See how tight I can get on this. Well, pretty good. We're gonna work on cleaning these contacts. What I wanna do first, I'm gonna cycle it backwards and forwards. I wanna make sure they're all working and they, they all are. I like doing this before I actually clean them. Which way is the best right there? Because I can see what was doing its job and which one wasn't. And let me get my adjuster tool. Where did I put it? I brought it out here. Did I put it on the table? There it goes. See, that's why you close your naps off. I just knocked it over. All right. So what I can see right now, this contact is not moving. This should be bending up when this switch closes. It probably is. It is making a contact or maybe not making a contact. It's not making the best contact. So we will clean this first. Normally, yeah, I would do it on my Dremel, but I can't get in there without totally bending everything up super bad. Because these Gottlieb stacks have such tiny little contacts in them. I will get that in there and then I'll close them. I'll just wiggle this back and forth like that. Now they're clean. These are different on the sides. Yeah. Clean. Put that in there. Tighten it down. Clean it. While that one's open. I'll clean it. Actually, where's my tool now? There it goes. We'll bring that down a little bit. Yeah, I like that. Now it actually moves. I know you guys can't really see it, but it is going up and down now. I will clean that. Yeah. Flip her over. Got that clean. This is just 600 grit um, wet dry sandpaper. <coughs> Excuse me. This is dusty work. Now we'll just rip a little bit of that off. Throw it in the garbage and then we can get a better foot new cleaning foot. You can actually hear it squeaking. There. That's clean. I will take this. Yeah, there ain't too much cleaning left. Look at that. I can't even, I can clean that a little bit. It's just hard cleaning the smoke stain stuff off. gonna be it's not gonna really do anything if I clean it I'll try to get some of it off
there. I got a good chunk of it off. I don't want to keep messing with it and bending everything up because we got that switch working. And you can't see it anyways. And we'll go here and go there. We'll take the clip, put the clip back in. I'd love to clean these completely, but I have to take them completely apart to clean them. And that's going to be like near impossible. See, again, now I'm just checking the operation of all these. And so far, again, this top one here. Oh, yeah, it's moving. It just doesn't look like it. It's a little um, cockeyed. So we will do this. so it doesn't turn. There. And we will tighten that up just a little bit. Hey, what's up, Borg Dog? Now it's too tight. You missed a spinner repair that we just did. Um, I'll show you, where are we, right here, right here, um, you can't really see it too good, but here, you can see this blob of solder right here, um, the contact pad, when I cleaned it, was spinning around with my Dremel, so what I did is I soldered the back of it down, to eliminate that um, contact pad from spinning because that gives you weird, really bad, weird switch errors when that happens. So when we were cleaning it, we noticed that we had some issues. Oh, lunchtime, PB and honey. That's a good snack right there. So that gives you really bad um, switch issues where you'll hit the pop bumper and it won't do anything. You'll like get points, but it won't like fire. So you popped in late then on Dave's stream last night too. So yeah, we were playing his WWE late last night after league night was over wanted to get some games in on it you know how you are when you get your new a new pinball machine you just want to play the crap out of it and then especially if you got some friends over it just makes them more fun so there was um after tournament was over four of us were playing it and then it got down to three of us playing it and then I had to go home because my wife was there with me. And um, she was just in Dave's other room watching TikTok. I didn't want to bother her. Yeah. A little bit's better than no bit, you know what I mean? All right. I think that's pretty good. I'm just checking how much these are all moving. It's very hard to show on video even. But they're all doing their job. So yeah, I'll be, um, hopefully, um, 
after this episode flipping the play field over and then next week assembling it so it should be really good because um, as soon as I get done with these switch stacks we are going to um, re rebuild the last drop target and these are all working good too where are they this one needs a little tweak yeah that game day I've got is just so mint it was a home use only I mean that cabinet there's like not a scratch on it or anything Playfield's got a little oh yeah that was yeah Oh yeah, or yeah, 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 yeah. That um, uh, great game. I only could play it for so long because of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was very fun, you know. I always tell people with pinball machines, don't pass them up just because you don't like the theme. Pass them up because you played it and it's not a good playing pinball machine. And that is a very good playing pinball machine. I am not a wrestler type person. So the theme does nothing for me. But now that gameplay that that game gives is very worth playing. You got to play the game. But yeah, the call-outs after a while, I was hearing that all night on the way home. I was even driving with the wife and sometimes going, yeah! And you couldn't help it after, you know, you drain a ball and start just yelling, yeah, with it. But you know what? It, the only thing is, it, it's, it matters if Dave's happy, since it's his machine. I like the game. Would I own one? No. I don't like it that much. But it that goes with every machine. You like it. Um, I don't like it. I like it. You don't like it. But it doesn't matter because it's your collection. It's your game. I love playing it. A beautiful machine. It, it, the thing is just, it's pretty. And the lights on it are great. But yeah. I can see it driving people nuts and where are we we are like out of the way but yeah I can see um people going nuts over the call outs these are pretty good condition too I'm just opening and closing these as I'm cleaning them because that bottom leaf is a real stiff thick leaf that doesn't bend it's more of a kind of like a leaf break so these ones um, I'm almost actually done with cleaning the leaves the only other ones I got a cleaner on top of the play field everything underneath here is clean already and that's it that's the last switch here I'm going to put this back together like that. Put the clip in it. I'm going to move the junk off this play field that we don't need. Zoom this camera out a little bit. Where are we? I just might actually point the camera at the bench and put it together, the um, drop target. Excuse me. I do got my new Dave's shirt on. Which is right here. My new Dave's arcade shirt. I told him I wanted one with just the logo on it. So I, I, I like the, these logo shirts. I think they're really cool. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to wash my hands off because I want to put the drop targets together. But 
since they're brand new targets, I don't want to um, get them dirty with my dirty hands. Plus, the drop, drop target assemblies are all clean. I went through them yesterday, well, a while ago, because they were all smoke damaged with smoke just like ground in on them. So I wanted to clean them off in the laundry tub. So that's what I did. And then I put the new drop targets in the big bank that's on the top. So we're going to do the side bank right now and then get that installed onto the play field. But, where yeah, my day of space shirt? Or, oh, I have, um, my wife has that space shirt. And then I have the mad scientist one where it's like a pinball machine that's like a, a monster. And then there's the guy on over the top working on it with a headlamp and a soldering iron in his hand. I have that shirt. And then I just got this one yesterday from Dave. All right, that's cold enough now to go back in my tool kit, my soldering iron. This, I think we will just do this. I think that'll be the best for building this. Yes, I think that'll be good. Yeah, Dave made some really good shirts. Really good designs. I shouldn't say really good designs, I should say great designs. drop targets old parts we got all of our springs and stuff right here let's get these out of the bag let's put them right there that bag we don't need and this is the top all right we're gonna first uh, okay, what do we do? We have to loosen this bottom. We have to take this bottom off. Makes it a little easier to work on. Well, impossible if you don't take this off. Or actually, not impossible but just easier. There we go. All right. We are good with that. Now we will start on one side. I have to get my, what was I using last time? I was using hooks. Well, a hook worked better than my spring tool. Put that in there, get the hook. So there's two springs you got to put on. There's a spring down here. It has to go back on this. I don't know how good you guys can see that even. Yeah, you can't even see it. I will show you. Uh, there we go. The spring right here has to get hooked on to this lever. There you can see the spring. That's got to get hooked on there first. And then the next spring will this comes down through here like that these springs are dirty as hell this will go around the drop target like that like there we go like that and then hook on to top of that rod there this will push through there 
then that goes down through the bottom like that. There, that's the spring we just put on. It goes through here, hooks onto that. And then goes through <coughs> and hooks right onto here. And by having the spring that's down here, where's my flashlight? Right down here where the tip of my flashlight is. Having that spring there and there, which allows the drop target. This gets pulled down by the spring that's down here, and this keeps tension on this spring. So we just gotta do that four more times. Which is just really hard to show. But I found out these picks from Harbor Freight work the best. I got an actual spring tool, which is over here somewhere. Here it goes. This is the spring tool I got. It's got a hook on one end and then like an open thing on one end, which works really good for other types of springs that you're doing. But for this one, no, it doesn't work that good. And these will go in backwards like that. So we put that in there like that. And then I drop my hook. I get that around there like that. This will get right around there like that. And I take this, put it back through there. Get that down through there and then like that. Rinse, dry, repeat, whatever. Rinse, wash, repeat. Yeah, yeah, but I did a whole drop target bank assembly yesterday, a big one that has 10 on it. And um, almost every one of these bottom springs fell off after I put it back together and had it halfway on the thing, so I wasn't paying attention. I guess I should show you guys the hook I'm actually putting on the drop target. It goes like that. And it goes like that. All right. Right here. This is the hook right there. That's what the spring clamps to on the, the target. But then, yeah, I got to oil all this too, yeah. Okay, I was like, whew, I couldn't find the last spring. But it's there, it's just hiding. there take the spring hook it on that get it down there Duh, I just pull it right off get this junk out of my way so I could turn this see it a little easier this will go back And it doesn't help that I'm trying to do this so you guys can see it. I'm telling you, a lot of these repairs are really easy to do. But when you're showing people how to do it, you have to move your body around in different ways that are unnatural. So it actually looks like I'm struggling doing this. But 
well, yeah, actually I am because I'm showing you how it goes together. So yes, I am struggling only because I'm showing you not if I sat there and did this by myself. There's no way I would have this so far from me. It goes like that. Oh, that's way back. There. That's like that. And it goes up through there. That goes down through there. Okay, now we got them all. Okay, they're good. Now we got to put that other screw back in here. And tighten it up. actually not going to fully tighten it. We're going to leave it a little loose. There. So I want this to be able to move just a little bit. Alright. So I can get the back plate on. Gotta go like that. Where does it go? No, it can't go like that. How does that go now? Rubber's on the bottom. So that's how it goes. goes like that. None of these go through either. That just doesn't seem right to me. Oh, well, it's because this. Is that right? does not seem right to me. They're not dropping down like they should. This is when you look at your phone for pictures to see how everything went together. I still believe that's upside down. And it is. Dummy. I'm looking at it the other way. There we go. And that's why it didn't work for me. Because I had it upside down. But you dummy. That's why it didn't work for me. So I'm like, wait a minute. This just doesn't seem right. And again, that's what happens when you are doing something for the camera and not just concentrating oh great that stupid thing fell right in here concentrating on what you're doing for your what needs to be done but yeah uh, leaving this assembly loose that those back screws allows me to move this in the direction I need to move it to get the screws into it and once I get all four of these screws in I can snug them down on both sides now but as I always say that you take pictures because if I was gonna struggle just a little bit more I would have went back to my camera and looked at the pictures of how this was assembled before I took the screws out I guess before I tighten this, I should get it all work. Here. 
I get a snap on that. All right, let's get those other screws tight. What should be these ones? Now we have to oil all the metal to metal spots. There. Forgot you always got to snap it. Yeah, mounting brackets at the top. Uh, yeah, it's like I said. Don't concentrate on the camera, Mark. Concentrate on yourself. No, the metal to metal spots, I am going to... Should have just oiled it up when I had to cover off. Dummy. Ugh. At least I know the screws will go back in perfectly. See, the other one went together so good because I didn't have to worry about chatting with anybody or I'm showing what I was doing. I just did it. Now I'm taking it apart to oil the metal to metal contacts. Otherwise, these wear out and you're buying new fingers. And that's one thing you don't want to buy or try to find new fingers. So basically wherever there's metal to metal rubbing and sliding on here, I am gonna put a drop of oil. Wash is done. I'll go front and back. I am just putting a very little drop. Might look like I'm doing a lot, but I'm not. oil the super lube little pen thing and a little drop right here where they rub I actually got a wear spot on it I think that's it. Yeah, the squeak's gone. Apparently, I didn't squeeze it on there. I don't see any oil. Perfect. Now you can put it. What kind of oil is that? This is um, super lube in a like pen. You know how we just use normal super lube in the tube? This is a pen version of it. It's really a light, thin oil. It's basically this stuff. but in a pen. It's the pen version and it's liquidy. It, it runs real good. So it lets you get um, all the goodness done. And I got the bracket on right this time. Okay, yes, um, we don't need to worry about Viruses. 
Um, I got it um, on Amazon, but I just also found it at Ace Hardware yesterday. And I bought a, another tube at Ace Hardware. Actually, that tube that you just seen, that, uh, that, that, that the pen, I've had that since like 2019. You can see I don't go through it a lot. You just need a little itty bitty drop and you're done. Because it flows so nice. So yeah, that that pen should technically last you probably a good ten years. Me, well, maybe even longer. I've had it what three, four years now, and I'm how far am I done on it? I maybe went through half of it. Yeah, it looks like about half. I went through. So yeah, um, if you're not doing constant pinball junk like I am, repairs, teardowns, and stuff like that, that tube might last you 10 years or longer, 10, 15 years, easy. If you don't do a lot of stuff, it'll probably last you your lifetime. It's like eight, nine bucks, something like that, maybe. Fully worth it. Yeah, working perfect. This, we give her a snap. Or it's even working better now. Yeah, I gotta get that snap. The coil snap. Perfect. One fully rebuilt mech. I have to put the other brackets on the side. And um, I believed. Jeez. So, what are we doing, Mark? We're taking this off again. It's, yeah, with the help of hardware man. Not person. I grew up with Ace as a place with the help of hardware man. So... Sorry, I'm stuck on that. I'm old school. Just like, you know, when you run out, run out to White Hen. When you run out of anything, run out to White Hen. So, Ace is a place with the help of hardware, man. Now, what is it, person? Something like that? I'm sorry. It's just all this today's terminology to make everybody happy. You can't make everybody happy. Fact, you cannot make everybody happy. Somebody's gonna get pissed off. You can't make everybody happy. So why try to make everybody happy? Because you're pissing other people off. So if you don't like things, you just don't like things. There we go. Now we got the brackets on properly. <sighs> all right, snap. Snap. Perfect. Good. We got that cleaned. Now we will move to here. We'll go a little wide and all right. Get this coil out of my way here. We can put this hook back. These I got from Harbor Freight. I think I actually gave some away to me when I had did my 1,000 subscriber thank you. So somebody got some. I gave a lot of stuff away for that. I bet you it cost me a thousand bucks to give away stuff for a thousand subscribers. I gave away some cool stuff. All right, now we got that. That. Move this flashlight. All right, now we got all these that we got to put back. That goes on the front. These all go on the back. This is going to go like this. So we're going to do 
We're gonna get this bottom one mounted first. That mounts right here. We can get it partially started. And again, this is hard to do. We need short screw for that. I forgot. There's two of them on short screws. Here we go, short screw. If you do the long screw, you're gonna run it through something you don't wanna be running it through in the mech. So Borg Dog, um, you sell shirts too, right? So might wanna throw your link up too. If you wanna, you know, spread the the word about your shirts. I think you sell shirts. You've made some shirts or something like that. But I think so. But yeah, if you got your link, I'm gonna throw it up. Some people might want to be interested in your shirts. You, I think you did the Cyclops and something else. I can't remember. There you go. Yes. So Borg Dog also does some really cool t-shirts. What is Alien Star and Cyclops? I'm not mistaken. Dave always talks you up. So I'm like, well, if you're here, I'm, you know, going to do the same thing. In my phone. I... Dinata? What the hell is that? Spam. So I forgot to turn my ringer off. Sorry about that, peeps. But yeah. So yeah, if. Anybody that's in the pinball world, I am all up for supporting everybody. If you do something, why not, you know, have help other people? If you're doing this, which is cool, share it. You know, Borg Dog is making some shirts, and I've seen Dave wear them, so, and you're here, so, hey, why not? Spin or rip it, yeah. Any problems with like Alien Star with Gottlieb? You know, because I know they're not friendly with that stuff, but I was just wondering if you have any problems with that. Alien Star is yeah, Gottlieb. These are always fun to do too, put these back on. I have rebuilt a few of these in my day. They're not always the funnest to do. But you know what? Doing a game like this, sometimes you need to just do everything. Okay, I'm not, I, I don't know what we're talking about here, so. I have no idea what we were just talking about, so I can't tell anything if I don't know what we were talking about. But yeah. I forgot what I was talking about. Getting old here. I'll be 51 in August. So, Borg Dog, you're welcome to stop by. We are doing a band thing for my birthday. And Dave will be um, drumming. So... Dave is our drummer. So, yeah, if you are interested, I've known you long enough where you are welcome. So, in, end of August, my house. You are more than welcome to come and watch Dave play drums. Dave is actually really good at drums. Me, on the other hand, I gotta watch YouTube to uh, learn some guitar. 
trying to get these tight enough and centered. So yeah, if you're interested, you can either get the address from me or Dave if you wanted to stop by and watch us jam to like eight songs. Can't tell you any of the songs, but you know, just don't do me like that. You know, because you just don't want to do something. All right, I got those. Now I can crank them down with my screwdriver wherever I put it. Here, put it right here. Yeah, I know it's a little tad far, but you know. Better that I invite you and have you not come than actually have you maybe be in the area and find out, dude, you know, why didn't you invite me? I was, you know, not that far from you. But, yeah. I'm going to be trying to record it. So, hopefully we can put it up on some private stream or something. Or unlisted YouTube I'll probably put it on my other YouTube channel and just have it unlisted and that way um we can send it to people that don't make it so I got two YouTube channels one was my very first one and then when I decided to do the pinball stuff I decided to make a, just a channel just for that Yeah, I'd love to live stream it, but I don't know if we will get ding for um, copyright on the music. But also, doesn't the music have to be good enough where you could understand <laughs> what it is? So to get copyrighted on it, that's the other thing too. All right, we got that. Now we got to get this switch. This one I can't show you because it's on the front. You know, it's kind of out of the way. But yeah, I would love to. So I, I know there's people I got that can't make it. This goes this way. And then there's other people I've never invited. Because I know they can't make it. But yeah, I think that'd be good. I don't know, maybe we could. So that way I know for sure it's getting recorded. But anyways, all the new people that are here, if I don't know you who you are, welcome. We are working on a Gottlieb Gold Strike right now. I am doing a full refurbish on it. And what I mean by a full refurbish is I am tearing apart every single mech, cleaning it, rebuilding it, repairing it, relubricating it, whatever it needs to make it play like it did back when it was brand new. Okay. Yeah, we got some sticky switches too. We got one at least. Yeah, I must have bent it. Probably when I was cleaning it. Um, here's Mark's Basement Arcade Link. If you're interested in supporting Mark's Basement Arcade, there's a swag link. And also, that's the Midwest Gaming Classic official website. If you don't know what the Midwest Gaming Classic is, it is the largest show of its kind in the world. They are all about 
gaming. And what I mean by gaming, it's whatever you think gaming is, that's what the Midwest Gaming Classic is about. So if you are into, let's say, um, uh, Magic the Gathering, you will find somebody playing Magic the Gathering, possibly a tournament, at the Midwest Gaming Classic. If you are in the pinballs, you are going to find all the major distributors, except for um, Deep Root, at the show. You will find Spooky. You will find Stern. You will find Chicago Gaming. Well, we didn't have Haggis this year due to just everything. But I think Haggis was at 20... 18, 2019, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if you are into video games, like um, Qbert or Pong or Street Fighter, you will find that at M MGC. If you are into um, retro gaming, like Commodore 64, Sega CD, Sega Master System, Atari 7800, 2600, whatever. Um, yeah, this is, yeah, it's Gottlieb's um, Gold Strike. So if you are in anything to do with gaming, I literally mean anything. If you are in a cosplay, there was a cosplay contest there. I saw so many characters I've never seen or heard of in my life walking around at the Midwest Gaming Classic. Furries and all different stuff like that. It's not my thing, but hey, it's your show. So do what you need to do at your show, you know what I mean? It's the gaming show. It is not my show. It is everybody's show. So if you are a furry, Come to the show and be a furry. Trust me, you guys are probably just entertained as we are. I love watching you guys walk around because I'm like, what the hell is that thing? But, hey, you got the right to do it because it is the gaming show. And I think it is awesome. That you're comfortable enough to walk around looking like a duck or a mouse or some anime so, what I say, more power to you on your quest for that. And I think it is cool that you do that. And I also think it's cool that we have a, a place where people can do that and feel free to be who they are. Plus, they got a giant vendor hall. Giant vendor hall this year. And Kabubot119, um, thank you for popping in and saying hi, too. But yeah, this is um, uh, Gottlieb um, Goldstrike. Or you want to call it Eldorado or 7-Up or, or, I mean, Canada Dry or what other ever seven names they used for this play field. I think it was seven games they used the same play field on. And I am not getting these screws to line up on the bottom. The homemade will. Don't do me like that. Don't do me like that. Girl, I love you, baby. Don't, 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 don't. Don't do me like that. <clears throat> Maybe that is one of the songs we're going to be doing. I cannot confirm nor deny that. But Borg Dog, that's like a perfect way for you to come to Dave's house too. Camp out at Dave's house the day before. You oh, there we go. You you go to Dave's house the day before. Live stream. 
with Dave Ryan and whoever's there. I doubt I will be there for the live stream because I got the party the day before, day after. You go there live stream, camp out at Dave's house, and then um, the next day you come to my party, and um, you know, and then camp out at Dave's house again, or maybe camp out here. I don't know if I'm gonna have room, cause I already got. I know I already got one person camping out here. But yeah, that'd be like a good way you kill two birds with one stone. You can go to Dave's house, see everything he's got. Maybe go by Ryan's house too. Ryan will have his weird alibi then. I don't know what's going on with that. Said um, April, end of May. It's almost the end of May right now. So he should have an invoice soon if he doesn't have it already. Maybe this week he should have his Weird Al LE invoice. Right now I'm just putting a coil back on. This is probably the last thing underneath the play field. Just like putting a pop bumpers back on. And none of the springs fell off, which is awesome. There are they all on. I can't tell without a light. There you go. Yes. And um, you just leave the machines on all, all night and you'll be warm. Trust me, having 40-something machines going on is going to generate some heat. Why is that? Oh, i got to fix that switch. Um, I forgot when you loosen up these leaf switches, they can tend to twist on you. There we go. I just hold them together and then tighten them up. So I'm like, why is the contacts not lining up? But I'm like, oh yeah. That's probably because I didn't align them back up when I put them together. But yeah, Dave's got a ton of awesomeness in his basement. Well, you know that. All right, I'm going to check all these switches. That's good. Check them now. A little later, they're doing their job. You're doing their job. And you're doing your job. And these are they're all open. And they close and then open. Okay. All right. And we'll get adjusted later. What do we got left underneath here to do now? I don't think there's much. Let's get all the junk out of the way and we will look at it. See if there's anything left to work on. This can go with my southern stuff. This will go back in here. I love this thing. It's a husky, but it's got all the weird sizes on it. Yeah, I probably have never used these big ones, but all these other ones are really nice. I just screwed it together so it never comes apart, but it was designed to slide apart. And then this has a hole in it where you can use it to tighten things down. But I just keep it like this. I can't even remember how long ago I bought that. All right, anyways. Let's zoom you out. Okay, we got the camera here and here. All right. We rebuilt the pop bumpers. Last week we did the flippers. I did the other flippers this week. New... 
um, EOS switches everything. I rebuilt this bank the other week. Um, I rebuilt this. We did the pop bumper switches. Those were the last switches. This switch I cleaned. We just rebuilt this bank of drop targets. We went through this and rebuilt it. I'm sorry we didn't go on this, but um, we'll do this. I will show you. It's a pain to get out, but. This was so much fun to rebuild. If I get my hands out of there, it will work flawlessly. I couldn't really do this on camera. I should have did it on regular camera and just recorded it. You take these two screws out and then this pulls off and then now this whole piece right here, it just wobbles or does whatever it wants to. So then you gotta clean it up and then when you're done, then you have to take this piece and adjust it this way or this way or whatever to get it all these contacts line up. And none of these were doing their thing. What I did was I took this whole thing out because it unplugs with a Jones plug here. I took it out and I stuck it in my laundry tub with hot water and um, degreaser. Because all these gears and everything in here that you can kind of see were just, okay, Borg Dog, take care. Um, thanks for popping in these contact, these all the gears in here were just so gunked up with grease and old carbon dust and the smoke. So I didn't get the coil wet. I just kind of hung them in there and then hose it off and got everything and then there was one broken wire which was here for this I looked at the schematic and found it it was just taped up somebody it was broke off at one time a long time ago and somebody just taped it up and never did anything with it so and the owner of the game says he knew nothing about that so it was the distributor who owned this game before that sold it to him at this did that quick hack on it so just he gave him the schematics for the game when he sold it to him so he could have just looked at that and found out which wire it was and then just resoldered it back on all right went through all the lights fixed all the lights that were loose or not working fully led'd the whole underneath play field so we got all that done now the only other thing that needs to be done is I'll take these and stick them under here so they don't flop around. Same with this one. Get that like that. I will move you back up a little bit. Actually, we will do this. And now we can sandpaper. This is the fun part. Here we go. Uh, what I mean by like fire let's do this real quick uh, twitch and face cam here we go you can see this was in a, clearly in a fire at one time by this all right here this is all smoke damage you can see I cleaned one spot right here wherever there was something they never cleaned so I still have to go through and clean all this, polish all this metal, and clean all this. So yeah, that's about it. So I think we are probably done for today. Um, what I should do is... Let's clean these areas first. 
Nah, I will do that on my own. What I'm going to do is later on, I'm going to clean these areas a big circle right here around both pop bumpers. I will clean that real good and then wax it and then reassemble the pop bumpers. Because that will be so much easier to do when we, um, I clean the area and then work on this. So that's what we're going to work on next week. We're going to go through and clean out all the bulb sockets and we will Novus to this, which will be really exciting. And then we will wax it. Maybe we will do that. Yeah, we'll do that. And then we'll flip it over and put the um, pop uppers on. We can do that. We will do that. Yeah. So this camera can turn off. It's not needed. So let's go back to this one. So yeah, I think that's what we will do next week. I actually am going to take, as soon as this is done, I will take this play field off. Put it back inside gold. You're looking at the chat. Next week, I will act, actually, after this is done, I'm going to take the play field off. Put it back in a gold strike and then move Knight Rider over here and finish Knight Rider. I don't have much left on that. I haven't been able to do anything just because my hectic week that I've had, I haven't been able to get much of nothing. I had to cut the grass twice and yeah, excuse, excuse, excuse. I got to the point where so much stuff is taking my time away from working on pinball machines that I had to hand off one of my projects to um, Dave. Dave's going to take one of the, my customer games, which is really good because the customer is actually so close to Dave, which is really cool. It's like 10 minutes from Dave. So Dave, Dave was like, you know, yeah, you know, you got anything, you know, extra. I'm like, I got a guy that's right by you. So give him that. Oh, and I should tell him about the um, light bars too. <laughs> Yeah, I'll hand that off to him because that's right down the block from him too. Anyways, so yes, anybody got any closing questions, ideas, or anything? Anything you want to know? I am happy to answer it. I know there's only two people watching. Well, actually one person watching because my laptop is on. So that means that I'm one and that says there's two people watching. So if anybody's got any questions or anything, shoot them my way. Otherwise, we are probably done and that'd be about it. Bueller? Bueller? Nope. All right. Um, see you guys next week at 2 p.m. Central Time. Also... Check me out at Mark's Basement Arcade on YouTube. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. Not too much Instagram. Mostly Facebook. I do post up um, some progress stuff. Games I've grabbed. Um, stuff like that. And um, mostly everything goes on YouTube. So if you are into Williams Sorcerer, um, check out my YouTube because I just started... A play field swap and no it is not here that game has actually been gone since july end of july possibly of last year so i am like a, a movie studio i have games that are done and gone that are just sitting and waiting to get uploaded um what do i got i got sorcerer um, Lucky Seven. Um, I have some Baywatch. I didn't do a lot of the Baywatch. I just did certain things on Baywatch. I don't even know what else I got. I got Knight Rider that will be coming up. Uh, I have a, a issue on Pirate Pirates Gold that 
I had to stop because I ran into some very dangerous electrical things with the game. So I told the customer that the game was um, not worth money-wise repairing due to the hackery that was done and um, we will just call it even of what I did because I didn't want to I can't charge somebody a ton of money for a game that doesn't work so I actually got the head complete the head is completely rebuilt and when I got to the play field I saw the hackery on there so he gave me a hundred dollar deposit so I'm like, we're just even, you know, take your machine or I'll buy it off you. I said, I can't do it. So I ended up buying the machine off of them. If I can find the parts someday, I will put it back together or it will be a parts machine. I do not want to make it a parts machine. So I am really looking for pieces to fix it. And then when I do fix it, I will contact him back up. And see if he wants it back. So, but I have no idea when that will be. But anyways. I think that's about it. We are good to go. So, on that last note, take care everybody. And I'll be back. It's Sunday at 2. And I'll have more pinball ideas for you. And you'll have things you'll want to talk about. And I will too. Anyways, um, take care everybody and later.